Hello YouTube, I am Torstein from Cinema Terror, and did you know that the highly influential 1998 Ringu was not the first film to tackle the book Ring by Koji Suzuki? Yeah, the entire Ring story first appeared as a book back in 1991. The first time someone tried to bring the book into a movie format was in 1995 with the TV movie that I am reviewing today called Ringu Kansenban. The story here is familiar for those who have seen either Ringu or the American or Korean remake of it, although there are a few changes that makes this stand out. In this one we follow the journalist Asakawa, who starts to connect some dots when he witness a young guy suddenly dying of a heart attack in the middle of the streets, and the very same night his wife's niece dies of the exact same thing. After doing some research, he finds others have died in the same mysterious way. His investigation leads him to a small hotel where he comes across an unmarked videotape that he takes back to his room to play. The videotape contains a mashup of weird images that seem at first to be unconnected before it comes to an end where it says that anyone who watches this will die exactly 7 days later. Believing this message and feeling cursed, Asakawa seeks help from his old eccentric friend Ryujo Takayama. Together they go on the hunt for the backstory of this mysterious tape, and since they now both have watched it, they only have 7 days to find the secret of the tape to avoid becoming the next victim of it. Nanyo. So, how good is Ringu Kassenbaum? Well, it's more interesting than good to be honest. It is fun to see this early take of what would eventually go on to become the Ringu franchise that made young audiences worldwide finally give a look at what Asia has to contribute with scary movies. This plays out more on the mystery aspect with little dread and scare in between each time the charity watches the famous tape. The story present in this is still able to keep engaged, but the tone of the movie is a bit weird and actually goofy at times. The biggest surprise is that this movie, made for television, actually had nudity in it. Not only nudity, but we even get to see Sadako fully nude. That surely was unexpected. Speaking of Sadako, her backstory is a bit different in this one, and without spoiling it, I thought it was a good idea to change this part on the cinematic version of Ringu. <laughs> ここ出ると逃げるように島を出てて女優になるとか言ってな。秘書とかいう劇団に入ったらしいんだが、それ以来行方知れず。綺麗な子だったから。お方変な男にでも騙されたの。I do have to say that I would also be surprised that a TV movie was able to have such content in it as Sadako's background as I'm used to television movies being more restricted. The low budget television format does not work with a story that needs to have the creepy factor turned up to maximum. The low production values also show in the awful music choices for the film. I'm not sure if they tried to go for an exorcist vibe with the main team that came back more than it needed to during the film, but it absolutely failed. The attempts at moody, scary scenes become more hilarious than anything else, and the lack of atmosphere in the film makes it unable to get it under your skin. Just take a look at how the haunted tape is there when Asakawa watches it for the first time. The performances are hit or miss. Asakawa, played by Katsunori Takashi, did grow on me after a while. Fans of Takashi Miike might remember him for the Salaryman Kintaro film. In this he had a good dynamic with experienced actor Yoshio Harada's character Ryuji, who I thought were great in this and improved the film greatly. Ringu Kansenban is a movie that would have disappeared in history of film if it wasn't for the fact that Hideo Nakata's Ringu would emerge 3 years later. Not that there's much effort except from the fans to keep this movie alive though, as this film as of yet has not seen a release on either DVD or Blu-ray. Seems like a missed opportunity to make some easy money by releasing this on DVD during the big J-horror boom of the early 2000s, but still it was only made available on VHS and Laserdisc in Japan. So if you are gonna see this with subtitles, then you sadly have to go the bootleg route. The question if Ringu Kansenban is worth watching or not depends on how big of a fan you are of J-horror and the Ringu franchise. 
This film only works if you have an interest in seeing an earlier, low-budget, poorer version of Ringu. This is not a good film, there's not much it has to offer on its own, but together with the later history of the franchise, it did keep me interested in all the goofy weirdness that kept coming to the screen. And as such, I will give Ringu Constant Ban a score of 2.5 out of 5. So horror fans, have any of you seen Ringu Constant Ban? Did you find it interesting or did it bore you? I'd love to hear your opinion of it, and if you know any other Japanese TV movies that are worth checking out, like the Juan ones, then let me know about it in the comment section below. If you like what I'm doing here and want to support the channel, then the link to my Patreon page can be found in the description box below. Thank you for watching.